Well, let me ask you a question, Hugo. Where oh. have you denounced in the states before, too? Yeah, in WWE. Yeah, WWE. I did. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Did you do I, did you do Puerto Rico too? I did seventeen years with Vince, and I did fifteen years with uh, uh, with the Puerto Rico and all the Caribbean, English and Spanish. And so, I did let, one season of Lucha Underground too. Okay, let me let me let me let me give throw this at you because I you you're obviously a fan of Jim Ross, right? Because like you probably work. You know, are you a fan of Jim Ross? I love Jay. Right. But I but I also love I also love the guys like Gordon Soli. Go, right, yeah, excellent, yeah. excellent. Yes, Gordon Soli. Yes. Right. So okay, so so here's my thing, and then the way wrestling's kind of changed a little bit, right? So we always talk about like like how what, like when we watch AEW and Jim Ross is like completely out of his element in in AEW because Jim Ross is a guy like probably like the way you are that likes to narrate stories uh-huh. like the undertaker comes out and like, and like you're telling like when the undertaker is yeah. doing a slow walk to the ring, you're talking about him. You're t- yeah. like when wrestling used to be like not as much action and guys would grab holds. And when you're grabbing the hold, you got to This is your opportunity to talk uh-huh. about the feud they're in and explain things. Everything. But wrestling today is kind of like very action based spots and stuff. Do you find it? Have you found it kind of more difficult to kind of narrate stories as opposed to like calling action the way wrestling's kind of changed? Uh, no, because I've been I've been very blessed that even working with Vince, he trusted me and Carlos Cabrera to do the right thing. So I was never uh, in that in that situation. As a matter of fact, he, he uh, the majority of times he let me produce um, my own uh, my my own telecast and uh, and with Conan, he he tells me okay, he says to Guillen, Carlos, and me, hey. This is where I'm going, and then he doesn't overproduce us. He lets he lets us feel the moment, and I knew Jim was in trouble. He's making good money there, there. But I knew he was in trouble when there was a main event match, and right at the middle of the peak of the like the climax of that match, uh, I heard Jim Ross sell a movie for that network, and they, he went from the main event, the excitement, the passion of the of the product into Whoever said, okay, Jim, push the movie that's coming up on, on, on the network. And to me, you have two other guys to do that. You've got your main guy going into selling a movie on a network. And to me, I, I knew right then that they were going to just overproduce Jim. And, and it, it's not the same. It's not right. the same. Yeah, because because Jim Ross is the type of guy that like, has a lot of iconic lines in uh-huh. big angles, you know, so like, my God, you know, so like, but like these days, it's like I watch a lot of the work, and it's like the, the matches are 100 miles an hour. You can kind of tell he doesn't really like the product, too. Right, right. He does, right, right. He's not a fan like of He'll this, make this little stuff. snide right. remarks. Right. And, and he's like too of, much commentator for that show, though. Right. To tell you the <laughs> yeah, truth. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He's a different yeah. style of commentator, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't even get me started with, with AEW, and, and they're part of our alliance because we do uh, we do things with them, and, I'm, and, and Conan gets really along with Tony and I worked his first the first two pay-per-views of AEW I worked for them and I'm rooting Spanish, for Spanish commentary uh, okay. yes and I'm right. rooting I'm rooting for them we uh, all are it's uh. just they just get me upset because I see the potential I see all the guys and now has become like the Monday night raw of guys just staying by the catering place and right. it's it is so bad it's so well, this, bad this this is the thing with us Hugo you go cuz me you and Conan you know, we we follow the trends in wrestling. We see where things are going, but we still follow the old school principles, right? And it's kind of like guys like us. You know, if we're old school, it's kind of like there's this thing now that your, your opinion's kind of dismissed. You know, like you're too old, you're out of touch. You're. It's like nah. It's like some of the things we're talking about would probably work, and it's like you guys should like you know do these things. And the fact that they're just kind of like dismissed. Just because they they assume we're out of touch because we're older, I think that I think that, I think that bothers all of us sometimes. Yeah, you know? tell me tell me where they are with ratings. Tell right. me it's going out in four years, so much money invested, and they're still right there, right, right where they were at the beginning. You know, and so to, it's like yeah. right, <laughs> and you want to tell them like, bro, you need more characters uh-huh. and character and, development on that show. You know, yeah. Let me let me let me give you a quick example, and not that it cannot happen because if, if the story is there, we should go with it. Underdogs are always a good story. You had Jungle Boy against a monster named Brian Cage, right? And with a, such a silly finish, Jungle Boy destroyed this monster, and then. And then you wonder why you're not getting better freaking right. ratings. So yeah. 
We said That's basically a- the same thing. We just reviewed the show and we said basically the same thing. If I were uh-huh. Brian Cage, I wouldn't even show up for work. Yeah, I mean, the finish took forever to get into. It was badly oh. done. Cage looked like a goofball. Here's a guy that looks like a million bucks, good looking, great body, can go, very professional. And you got him out there doing jobs every week yeah. and you've devalued him. And you've done, they've done that, nothing with Adam Cole. They really didn't do much with CM Punk. They really, they've dropped the ball on so many people and, and it's their fault. And they don't well, like to be criticized and they don't like to be called out. But, you know, this is, we're not hating, we're stating. No. You know, we love wrestling. Yeah. We're, we're just trying to yeah. tell you, we've been there. You know, well, we were there when the ratings were at their highest, and now we're still in the business, and we can compare, and we can tell you, you know, that a lot of mistakes are made. Well, here's the thing that, that I think Hugo probably sees this, too, is, you know, you're not protecting your big guys. You know, like, like your big guys kind of got to be the big, your big guys can't really lose that much. You know, like there needs to be a spot for the big guy to lose. Some, and like Jungle Boy beating Luchasaurus one week and the Brian Kid. It's like you're pushing the smaller guys to beat the bigger guys to the point that when the, when they do it, it's not even a big deal anymore. 